All right, hello and welcome to uh, the first of three videos on the immune system. Um, and there definitely is a lot of nasty stuff out there waiting to get you sick. Um, and, but it has to get into your body first. Um, so we'll move into how the immune system works. Um, a couple of things beforehand. There's some vocabulary. Just, these are the learning targets that are associated with the immune system. Um, in this first video, we are going to deal with um, the nonspecific immune uh, response. So, um, we'll try to highlight the difference between nonspecific and specific, although that will become clearer in the later videos. But um, 33 here and 34, those are going to be the biggies um, <clears throat> for. Um, this video. So with lots of stuff out in the world that has the potential to make an organism sick, um, the most efficient thing to, to do um, to keep from getting sick is to keep those pathogens out. Um, so a pathogen is anything that causes disease. And <clears throat> mammals, we're really talking about mammalian um, immune systems here, um, have basically a system of walls or barriers to keep pathogens out. So uh, physical barriers is really what we're talking about here. Um, and it's definitely a very efficient way of, um, of dealing with uh, uh, pathogens, keeping them out. So We've got the skin itself, um, or whatever outer layer the organism has, um, and that provides a really nice barrier. Um, the hairs um, that are on many organisms, or uh, mammals, I guess, but all mammals, um, those help to trap things, uh, pathogens, to keep, then keep them from getting in. Um, and uh, sweat glands produce secretions, which you see here, that are um, accumulate on the outside of the skin and those things um, <clears throat> tend to wash um, potentially wash the uh, pathogens off um, and in some cases they ha actually have properties that tend to um, kill or slow down those pathogens all right so we basically have a barrier system and in some ways um, you can think about uh, this kind of like uh, civil defense or uh, an army or a defense system that a country has. Um, many countries have walls or physical barriers around the outside of, of their countries to, to keep invaders out. And that's really what organisms are trying to do. Um, now, the nonspecific nature of this, let's get at get at that first is that it doesn't the the barriers it, it doesn't matter what is trying to get in it doesn't matter whether it is a you know a type of uh, chemical that um, it will potentially cause disease or illness doesn't matter whether it's a virus doesn't matter whether it's a bacteria or um, some other organ you know other organism like an amoeba that might cause illness it doesn't matter. The, the, these physical barriers are not specific to any of those things. And it doesn't matter what virus it is. It doesn't matter what bacterium it is. The physical barrier skin and all this stuff um, are going to act exactly the same um, against each of those. And they don't um, discriminate or make a difference between those two. And that's what's nonspecific about these. Now, it is definitely um, entirely possible, uh, happens all the time, that um, pathogens get into us. Um, so what happens now? Um, keep going with the, the defense analogy. Um, the immune system has some really basic foot soldiers or defenses that, again, are nonspecific, will work against anything. Um, to try to get rid of or kill those invaders that have have gotten in um, hopefully before they make you sick all right so we've we've dealt with the physical barrier so cross that off the list um, those of you that have had immune system um, stuff bef before or can remember that many times um, there's kind of a dividing line drawn here 
um, and the physical barriers are often called the first line of defense. And uh, what we're getting to now um, is often referred to as the second line of defense. So if uh, the pathogen has gotten into you, um, what's going to um, do, a, do a basic job of trying to take care of, of you to, before you get sick. Both this first line and the second line of defense are nonspecific. Um, in that the only thing that matters is that what they go after is not you. All right, so nonspecific, it doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter whether it's an Ebola virus or an AIDS virus or um, Streptococcus bacterium, <clears throat> these defenses will try to kill it. All right, and there's a whole list of things. Some of them are cellular um, and some of them are chemical. Um, in nature, um, and you don't need to know all of these. If you go back to the to the learning targets, um, the you just want to you want to be familiar familiar enough uh, with a few of them. Um, so you have examples of parts of the non-specific immune response, um, and to be able to pull on those and explain how they are non-specific. All right, so the first thing um, we want to hit on here in the second line of defense are um, phagocytes. All right, and these are cells that consume pathogens by phagocytosis. Um, and that is where the cell membrane reaches out. So it's happening right here. Cell membrane is reaching out um, and engulfing something um, and then taking it in, making a vacuole, and then digesting it. So all of these different types of cells right here, these are phagocytic cells. Some of them uh, wander around, some of them are fixed in place, um, but their job is to engulf anything that does not belong. All right, so that includes pathogens. It also includes things like um, parts of you that are waste products that are just floating around. Um, so these cells do a very general job of um, <clears throat> asking the question, is, does, does this, whatever I'm looking, quote unquote, looking at, um, does this belong in this body or not? And this ties nicely back to the cell membrane, where hopefully you recall um, there are those carbohydrate things sticking off the outside, either glycoproteins or glycolipids. And those, the things sticking off the outside of the cell are um, a unique flag system that identifies the organism. And what these phagocytes do is they basically ask the question, they check in with these um, things that are hanging off the cells, and um, they check the shape and are asking the question, does this belong in this body or not? Um, beyond that, they don't care. Um, if it doesn't belong, they're going to gobble it up. All right, so it's a, it's a self, um, non-self identification thing and it doesn't go uh, beyond that it doesn't get to you know oh is this the Ebola virus or is this um, the uh, herpes virus or whatever non again this is non-specific it's just is it you is it not you all right we'll probably skip over that one um, there's some chemical defenses as um, the, called interferons that um, are released by different types of um, white blood cells or cells of the immune system. And these interferons tend to slow down um, the activities of living pathogens, so viruses and um, bacteria and other types of, of uh, living organisms that are trying to make you sick. So, Chemical defenses, they are nonspecific. Again, it doesn't matter um, what the identity of the invader is, um, the interferons are going to act to slow that down. So again, this is nonspecific. All right, um, we'll skip over that. Um, the inflammatory response um, is, is pretty important and also pretty interesting um, from one perspective when it goes wrong. Um, you've probably all experienced this if you um, you know, if you cut yourself by accident with something, um, the, the cut will get inflamed. Um, that's the uh, result of this inflammatory response. Um, and um, 
it is it, it happens as a result of these mast cells which are shown here releasing chemicals that are called histamines um, not antihistamines but histamines um, and these histamines cause these different things to happen so they cause they basically cause inflammation which increases blood flow it activates the phagocytic cells it increases capillary permeability and all of these things are good um, as far as um, trying to trying to fight off pathogens when they're when they're just trying to get in um, most specifically um, or one of the most important things is, is, is this regional temperature increase when if blood flow is increased to the area of a wound or an infection that increases the temperature and many um, pathogens that um, make us sick are specifically adapted to um, living and reproducing and being successful at normal body temperature um, so if the, that, if the temperature is increased in the, the region of the infection then um, they have a trickier time of that so this is an adaptive response to that um, anybody that experiences allergies however um, you get mast cells producing histamines when they shouldn't um, or in response to um, materials that are not actually harmful so like dust dust is not really a pathogen that's going to make you sick um, but some people have uh, their mast cells um, go off by accident and release histamines in response to dust or cat dander or uh, pollen that kind of thing um, and they experience many of these inflammatory response uh, reactions when they um, when a, somebody without an allergy would not be experiencing that and again um, this inflammatory response is non-specific it doesn't matter what's coming in what was on maybe the um, you know on the fork that you accidentally poked yourself with or you know on the the nail that you stepped on um, the inflammatory response is going to do its thing no matter the identity of of the invader and then the last item here um, in non-specific um, second line defenses is fever um, which again we met I mentioned just uh, in relation to the inflammatory response that um, pathogens many of them are adapted to living at our normal body temperature um, so raising that temperature overall which is what a fever is is actually a, a beneficial response if it goes too high it's not good because it could denature proteins um, but a slight increase in temperature um, has an inhibitory effect on pathogens that um, are invading are potentially invading us and it also tends to accelerate stuff that's going on um, so enzymes are working quick more quickly and all that kind of stuff associated with uh, higher temperature but again um, only a little bit of, of raised temperature is a good thing all right well that takes us to the end of non-specific keep in mind that there are to, to recap we've got barriers um, because the best way to fight off an invasion is to keep it out um, so if they can't get in um, then we're in good shape um, and it's efficient it's cheap um, doesn't require a lot of energy <clears throat> however some things get in um, we have um, other non-specific defenses cellular and chemical um, that try to act against the pathogens to knock them down before they um, can take hold and actually make us sick <clears throat> if you've ever been sick and I'm sure you have I know I have um, then you know that this both these two systems don't always work um, many times they do and we're, we're fine but, um, sometimes they don't and we do actually get sick um, so that's going to take us to the third line of defense um, and both of the elements of that are specific um, so it, it does matter um, whether it's Ebola or um, the common cold virus or the influenza virus like the H1N1 influenza virus um, the identity matters once we get that past this point and we'll we'll talk more about that in uh, the upcoming videos <clears throat>